so many people, so many intellectuals, so many scholars. And most of the time when we talk to them, and even when I have, you know, these read sessions with them and I ask them the, the, their story, where did it all started from? They would, most of them, they would say it started from our childhood. It started from our parents, how they read to us, how they, you know, treated us, how they treated books. And uh, so this is like amazing. One question that I'm going to, because the topic is directly related with you, um, it was selected because of your amazing personality and how successful, mashallah, you are in life. And um, tell me just, um, you, uh, you have to tell us your story that books played and what role do actually generally books play in a successful person's life? So this is the topic, and I want you to please associate it with your personal experiences. Okay. Um, I was a bit studious throughout my life uh, because the reading habit, uh, I have a very bad reading habit. Bad meaning when I say bad, I say smilingly because my family at times gets irritated. I have one and a half hours every night for the past 30 years, no matter where I am, I read before I sleep. Wow. No matter where I am. And I have traveled a lot. So uh, my, my wife packs four to five books in my suitcase when I go somewhere. So she knows what books do you want packed? Nobody asks me what suit you want packed, what <laughs> tie you want packed. So Amazing. this reading habit of mine, you know, people today, the young people today, uh, when they comment on social media or uh, I give lots of speeches at, at universities. And when I hear, I don't know, when I know that, when, when I hear that word, I don't know. And I see a smartphone in that child's hand, that question or that comment, I don't know, bothers me. How can you not know when you have internet in your hand? Because I was shifted from non-internet to internet time. When I was in university at Rutgers, there was no internet. I used to go to the library where we had cue cards, index cards, take books out, sit on the floor, flip through the pages, go make microfiche copies. And and 10 cents a copy. And I used to be broke in university. I swear, if I had to make 200 page, pages, that's $20. $20 was my entire, my entire week's lunch money. Entire weeks, I can spend $3 and have great pizza lunch. So books played a great role in my life when I landed on Wall Street. I, I, I landed on Wall Street Believe me, it was, it is the most cutthroat place in the world. Yes. yes. I spent my entire life overseas. Even America is not cutthroat. You work in Connecticut, you work in uh, California, you work in Idaho, wherever you work. It is not a cutthroat place. It is an efficient place. It's a competitive place. Competitiveness and efficiency are take the back seat, because they have, you have to have that. It is swimming with the sharks and getting bitten every second. There are no mentors. Nobody wants to teach you. You get, a tr you get the training that everybody else gets. It, I mean, not everybody has the same comprehension level, but that's it. You get six hours of training for three months, whatever it is, you're sent packing your bags, then you land. I started as a stockbroker and stockbroker's job is to call people, random people in America. And you, you, it's like the movies, 15 people, uh, seats, 300 rows, 800, 900,000 stockbrokers. And I started at the world's largest financial institution at that time, Prudential. And no mentors. Who do I go to? There's no internet that I can search or there's no social media that I can connect with someone. Books. When every other person, 
was going, and Wall Street is a very party place. So on weekends, everybody went to the Hamptons, went to, if there's this winters, they went to Florida. You know what I would do better? I would pick up the books and I would lock myself in the room. Saturdays, I would read finance books. Sundays, I would read self-help books. That was my routine for three years. Three wow. years. I did not take a single weekend off. I did not go anywhere. I lost friends. And seven years later, I hired this all same friends eight years later when I opened up the investment <laughs> bank. Each oh and my every God. friend of mine from my university days, if they're watching, they're my life. I love them. But <laughs> I don't say it in the wrong way, but I bug them a lot. They used to call me a geek. I mean, in America, being called a geek when you're 21, that's not something good, you know? Oh. <laughs> I've never been a geek. I would have loved to be with them, go fishing, go partying, go clubbing, go wherever they are going. I would love to do that. But self-help books. And the more I read, the more I discovered myself. People say they gain knowledge. Knowledge is secondary. There was no other way of me discovering myself. Books played the role of a mirror to me. Mirror. It created critical thinking in me. I remember, I, I, I don't read novels, but, but I remember reading novel 1984 of George Orwell. The George Orwell's novel starts with that sentence. And that was the beginning of my critical thinking. I said, how could it be a cold, dark and bright day? And the clock doesn't strike 13. Clock only strikes 12. Yes. Practically <laughs> just a pose statement. Amazing. Yes. You know, and that made me discover myself that, you know what? I can learn to think critically. And I became a fan of the word learn to. People say he's God gifted. Nobody's God gifted. You discover yourself. You discover that you have that in you. And then you work upon it. You work upon it, work upon it, work upon it. And that critical thinking and discovering yourself brings you emotional management. Emotional management in a successful person's life is the most important thing. If you cannot manage your emotions, how are you going to manage 800 people and their emotions? who work for you or a thousand people or 50 people or hundred people, how can you, how can I teach somebody how to drive when I'm afraid of driving or I'm not a master of driving, master. So before one wants to be an entrepreneur or leader, one has to chisel himself or herself, chisel. And I say that word chisel, you have to chisel yourself. Because every person is a stone, metaphorically speaking. Everybody gets a square, round piece of stone. You have to chisel yourself. Somebody chisels themselves into being a doctor. Somebody yeah. chisels themselves being into a journalist. You chill yourself. And in order to see what you want to get yourself chiseled into, books will lead you there. I didn't, I am an accidental investment banker. I'm an absolute, yes, I, yes. And I openly say this, say this. Okay. I am an absolutely accidental first, <laughs> okay. first year of my, uh, of my college, I took every elective, elective course so I can get straight A's and keep my GPA high. Oh. Simple, simple and honest cheating method. Okay, simple and honest cheating method. 
<laughs> Third semester, my counselor said, you have to declare your major. I said, yes. His name was Miller. I said, Dean Miller, I have no idea what I want to be. And he's like, literally, I 99%, I thought I would be a psychologist. Because I had taken so many psychology courses. Because I've been in, infatuated with human behavior. So I took so many that I, I was finished with psychology and philosophy. Two, co two elective courses I kept taking. Philosophy of religion, philosophy of logical thinking, philosophy, philosophy, psychology. Fourth, third semester of my university, the dean said, you have one elective course left. You have to declare a major. I said, okay. So I went out of the dean's office and I went around. If anybody who goes to Rutgers, they'll know right outside Miller Hall, there's a huge lawn. I asked everybody. I said, next semester, what's the easy course? <laughs> I, I am going and asking strangers. Strangers. I mean, I know them by face because we're going so I said, what's an easy course? Who gives a straight A? Oh my God. A little bit of, little bit of uh, effort. So one person says Bruno Parigi is, is uh, I love him. I salute him. He's been my mentor for years in economics. And he says, Professor Parigi. I said, okay. What is he teaching this semester? Is this a money in banking? And I was like, money and banking? What the hell? It must be such a dry subject, money and banking. But I had no choice. So I went, ran back in to Dean Miller's office for registration. I said, Dean, most probably I think I'm going to take uh, money and banking and, and I will decide this semester. I swear, Fatima, the first class I attended, I felt I found my calling in life. Wow. I picked up the book. It was a 389-page book. The big one, not the small book, the textbook. Huge, this mm -hmm. big. I finished it in two weeks. Oh my God. I was doing nothing but reading. Reading, 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 reading. And I went back to Parigi and I, and I started asking questions. In, in class, he made me shut up. He's like, you can't do this. You have finished the book. You can't. I said, can I come to your office? Hours? He's like, yes, yeah, sure. So I was sick. And I said, but how does this happen? But how does this happen? But how does this happen? He's like, don't ask me. Take these related books. I would take the related books, finish them, and come back. <laughs> and I would ask him. You know, he said to me, he says, either you're going to be an economist or an investment banker. Economists are not very rich. Investment bankers are very rich. <laughs> so, the greedy little lad I was, you know, I said, ah, banking. <laughs> yes, investment banking. <laughs> and fourth semester, I declared double major, finance and economics. And my dean was like laughing at me. He goes, first, I couldn't force you to declare a major. And then you come back and you're saying you're going to do 30 extra credits and do two majors. I said, no problem. Finance, economics, anything, I'll read. I'll read, I'll read, I'll read. And so wow. I call myself an accidental banker, I swear. But accidentally, I found my calling in life. And that was through books. And books, people, and people ask me, how do you develop a habit of reading in late teenage years or early 20s? No problem. Read five pages a day. That's it. 99% of the people get sick of reading because they started like New Year resolution. 364 days, they all quit smoking. 11.59, I'm going to quit smoking today and I'll never smoke for the rest of my life. Oh, come on. That's not going to work. <laughs> you go to the bookstore and you buy seven books. From today onwards, 
I'm going to become an avid reader. And then comes January 1st and January 2nd, more metaphorically, and, and 10 days of January, and you're like, ah, heck with it, I'm smoking again. Same thing happens with books. Don't buy any books. Please don't buy any books. Go on internet first. Go start reading. Five pages or 20 minutes. Go to any website that you like. Yeah. First of all, you have to find your interest of reading. Mine have been, you know, finance is not my interest of reading. Of course. It's not. <laughs> yes. People say that how I said it's, it's, it's a mandatory reading for me. If I yeah. want to work with finance, investment banking came politics. People say, how do you know whatever little you know about politics? With investment banking, as an investment banker who's running an investment bank on Wall Street and investing in 19 different countries, you have to have a total grasp of the political situation in relation to history, the historical political situation. What happens in Thailand? How does the monarchy and the democracy works? What happens in Argentina? How quickly the governments can be toppled? So you know what to do. Should I invest there or not? My interest has have always been human behavior and autobiographies. I feel an autobiography is written usually in your late 40s or early 50s. Autobiography, not somebody's writing biography for you. Yeah. When you write your own biography, your late 40s, 50s, early 60s. And I don't think anybody lies in their biographies. No. I don't think anybody does. No. I'm not talking about Madonna and somebody else writing for her. That's besides the point. <laughs> I'm talking about successful people. Yes, true. In 400 pages, you are getting 40 years of that person's experience. Yes. In 400 that's... pages. Yes. You can read one biography a month times 40 years, hmm. 480 years of other people's experience. You can yeah. learn from one year. I do not think there is a single biography of a successful person left. I've read about 670 biographies in my life. So I don't think there is a single biography left for the first 15 to 18 years from Wall Street, I read nothing but biographies, nothing but biography. In between, I would read the self-help small books from Norman Vincent Peale or, or anybody else, Dr. Joseph Murphy or, or anyone, Stephen Covey, anybody who came, because those were paperback. And I took speed reading courses. Then okay. when I was 26, I took speed reading courses because I always felt I'm running out of time. The more I read, the more I realized I know nothing. Wow. <laughs> the more I, I swear it is an absolute journey of me finding out I'm ignorant. I have been more ignorant every new year. It ha life has made me realize that yeah. every passing year, how much more ignorant I am and how much more confident I thought I was the last year. I read some, something new. That brings humility in a person. Yes. So people say the role of books in a successful person's life, everything, you just have to change your point of view of looking at books. Yes, yes. Are you looking to gain? There's books. People say, what are your favorite books? I don't have any favorite books. I swear I don't. Because my, my favorite book remains favorite for five months until I read something else. And then I say, oh. 
<laughs> yeah. This is the better one than, than the previous one. <laughs> and after 10 years of reading, I said to myself, I don't have any. I like certain books. If somebody asks, out of all the self-help books, yeah. which one would I give a young man to read? I would say The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph Murphy. That book I read at 24. I should have read it when I was 17. So when people ask me to guide them about books, I, I say I can only tell you which one should be the first step. But you have to climb the stairs on, on your own. Mm 